Welcome to the talk on St. Ignatius and the Frontier Mission. What is the first thought that comes to our mind when we think of Ignatius? Not the image of Ignatius praying in a cave in Manresa. But the image that comes to our mind is a man on the move, the pilgrim, a stick in his hand and his cassock flying in the wind. When we think of a frontier, what comes to our mind is an exotic, undeveloped, remote area and uneducated, poor, illiterate people there. During these few minutes, let us try to see how Ignatius was a frontier missionary. Let us first look at the ministry of Jesus himself. Jesus was born and he grew up in a society that believed in God's blessings being manifested in material wealth and physical comfort. Contrary to this belief, Jesus preached and practiced the gospel of, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was ill and you comforted me. This radical belief and the frontier ministry cost him his life. Jesus and his way is the model for the frontier ministry. Challenging the unjust social and religious values and helping the people to liberate themselves from these so-called values is the path that we are supposed to take as the frontier ministers. When Jesus called St. Paul from his horse, he gave up everything familiar and moved to the unfamiliar, strange world of the Greek. Paul radically believed and preached that Jesus was his inner consciousness and outer wealth. This belief pushed him further and further and he constantly stretched his boundary. His attention was on the finish line. Wherever the frontier would take him, he would go. Jesus stayed in his own society and took care of the people at the peripheries. Paul moved out to the remote areas and took care of the people at the peripheries. Pope Francis in 2013 gave us the meaning of frontier ministry. He says, quote, avoiding the spiritual illness of self-referentiality and going out to the peripheries where new questions, new challenges, new hopes call for a creative response from the church. End of quote. Jesus has shown us that even in established societies, there are people who live in the peripheries. Paul has shown us, if Christ was our goal, our finish line, then we would be moved to unfamiliar grounds, what we call frontier lines. Pope Francis is inviting us 
to meet the people at the peripheries and to face the new challenges, new questions with a creative response. How Ignatius understood frontier ministry comes out clearly in his most famous and most loved phrase, Ad Meorum Dei Gloria, for the greater glory of God. This phrase guided Ignatius in his personal and apostolic life to make the right decisions. He would do any work, he would go anywhere, and he would say anything if that would bring greater glory to God. There cannot be a better definition of frontier ministry than this spirit of openness to the spirit. This frontier spirit of Ignatius comes out more clearly in his other phrases too. To love and serve God in everything. It is to find God in all things and to find all things in God. The fourth vow, the vow of availability, was and continues to be a call for frontier ministry. For Ignatius, Jesus was the goal, the finish line. Life in Jesus was the medium and the frontier ministry is the method to attain this goal. Ignatius created his own method of staying in spiritual condition. We all know walking and cycling are physical exercises that keep our body fit. In the same way, Ignatius used praying and meditating to keep himself in good spiritual condition. This spiritual condition is a prerequisite for frontier ministry. Only in this spiritual state we will be able to experience spiritual consolation that would lead us to love God and to love our neighbor. A radical creative response to the people in the peripheries of our traditional established apostolates will be possible only if we experience spiritual consolation. I am not talking about psychological feel-good experience, which is often self-centered. Spiritual consolation is always other-centered. The spiritual condition of Ignatius was so good that he could, he could have God experience whenever he desired. That was why whatever he did was a frontier ministry. And always he encouraged his companions to take care of the people in the peripheries. If the frontier ministry does not spring forth from spiritual consolation, it will soon become a showpiece. Sooner or later, we get tired of this show. When that happens, God takes the back seat and the so-called pioneers become the heroes of the story. This is a real danger in the media crazy modern world. Everything Ignatius did was a frontier ministry. Here are a few examples. When Ignatius wrote the five chapters or the formula of the institute after the March 
1539 deliberations. He wrote that the Jesuits won't have common divine office. The Jesuits won't have penance by rule. These were radical ideas at that time. But a sure highway to frontier ministry. He bought a house for the reformed sex workers in Rome, Casa Santa Marta. He also bought a house for the children of these ladies. And this was a frontier ministry. Ignatius allowed the converted Jews in Rome to stay with his own novices at Gesù in the house of Santa Maria della Strada. This was a frontier ministry. When Francis Xavier wrote to Ignatius asking for permission to admit lay students in St. Paul's College, Goa. Ignatius prayed over it and he saw the good in that and so he gave permission so that they would make good citizens of India. This was the first time in the history of education anywhere in the world where lay students have been admitted into schools. This indeed was a frontier ministry. When he wrote the constitutions of the Society of Jesus, he did not want to finish it because he believed the constitutions had to be flexible according to the situations of persons places and of times. This was a frontier ministry on the part of the general of the Society of Jesus. The life and work of St. Ignatius and his companions was so radical that they chose and went to the people at the peripheries. He had the wisdom and courage to go to the frontiers in what he wrote and in what he did that he and his companions were called the reformed priests. Ignatius was the model and inspiration for his companions and Ignatius continues to be our model, our inspiration even today. In 1546, Ignatius wrote to the King of Portugal, John III, as a response to his letter and offered himself to go to Ethiopia, should there be no other Jesuit willing to take the missionary challenge. This is the spirit of Ignatius that we Jesuits are inspired by to look for frontier ministry in whatever we do. It is this spirit of Ignatius that will inspire us to hear the cries of the people in the periphery.